Welcome to another episode of Galactic Ambassadors podcast. My name is Julia Balaz, and today I'm joined by Sumati coming to us from Canada, from Ontario, right? Welcome, Hello. Sumati. How are you today? I'm great. Thank you. It's a beautiful sunshine today. Yay. That's great to hear. I love the background you chose for this podcast. Thank um, you. I'll today we are recording this on the 7th of February and... Again, divine synchronicity at its best. The transiting moon currently is hitting your north node, lunar node, in your seventh house, house of relationships, and pretty much the main transits that we have, including the uh, outer planets, the slower moving planets, are kind of activating the upper uh, part of the natal chart. So good timing to get certified as a quantum soul guidance practitioner i'm so so happy that we have this moment together at last you've been such a beautiful and valuable member of our community um how long is it since you enrolled in the course and and or since you were part of the quantum soul guidance community it's definitely yeah, it was, a year just over a year maybe it was like july 22 Ah, nice. Yeah, we were there from the start when we um, put together the Facebook private group. And it's always so wonderful for me to see you on our Q&A calls or whenever we participate as a group. Um, your contributions are just so well received each and every time. So I'm really looking forward, Sumati, to learn more about your background story, learn about your past, your current experience with all these powerful transits, and maybe your vision for the future of your kind of emerging path as a quantum soul guidance practitioner. Where would you like to start? I, I, yeah, thank you. Just interesting that, you know, you mentioned that I've been in the course just about since the beginning, not too long after, a few months after you had launched it. And it's funny that at the time when I signed up, I was so, I had watched your interview with Pam Gregory and I just lit up right away and thought, okay, I need to know more. And I thought, okay, don't be impulsive. So I didn't sign up right away, but within a week I was signed up because I just couldn't, I just kept going back to it. And I thought at the time, I'm going to be finished in six months. Like this is, that's it. I'm going to just move through this and this is the thing. And obviously not quite the timing and the way that that moved through, but it was such a beautiful evolutionary experience I found to really work through the course material. There's so much there that is not just learning in order to be able to deliver these readings to others, but there's so much that we learn about ourselves as we move through these different modules and explore our own charts. So I'm so grateful for everything, all of the experiences that I've had in that time and participating in the group calls too. There's a beautiful energy in the community. So thank you for that. Thank you for contributing to that too. Am I correct, uh, presuming that your natal Pluto was transiting your seventh house during the time of you going through the course? They, yes, yeah. Seventh house, house of relationship. Just a couple of days ago, I was going back in time to my own important events throughout my life, looking at chart of all those days and my goodness when i had pluto transiting my seventh house it was during my late teenage years i you know so many karmic connections and such intense experience of all relationships around that time so i can only imagine how challenging it must have been for you to have this transit while collectively there we just feel so much more we are in tune with so much more and your moon is in pisces so you're probably really like swimming in the collective consciousness of all kinds of emotions and energies and thoughts that are coming through. How was it for you to have the astrology there as a backup, as some kind of guidance or something that you can look at to get a better sense and understanding of it? So, so helpful, like just invaluable because everything you just said is very poignantly true was all the feels from all directions and the astrology allowed me to just have an awareness that brought me immediately sort of to a higher level of consciousness about what I was experiencing. So that whatever 
challenge, issue, the feelings, the emotions of any given experience, the astrology really is so helpful in allowing some insight into a greater, uh, you know, a different perspective and usually a higher perspective of, I wouldn't say an expectation because we don't want to sort of live in the future of it, but some kind of context for why things feel as intense as they do over the past while. So it's been immensely helpful. I'll say almost makes it feel sort of easy because if you look at this and you see like, okay, this is about, this transit is about to come in, then we almost expect when those, when those feelings and emotions hit and we can say like, oh, okay, well, I recognize that and I don't have to be quite so activated by it. I can so relate. Just a couple of days ago, there was just totally the silliest thing that triggered my anger, I'm going to say. And my Mars, natal Mars is in Aries, but in 12th house. So I rarely ever, ever express it. So I have a lot of, it may be under the carpet and then things get triggered, but always during the transits only. So this was my apology after the very short hours. I just slammed the door. And then, I don't know, maybe half an hour later, I came back and I said, I want to apologize for slamming the door. I was hungry and angry and literally at that time because immediately I went and I looked what's going on right now astrologically and the moon was opposing my natal moon hitting on Mars and hitting on Jupiter as well in the houses house of my relationships and Uranus so it was like sudden burst and right back in I was like really sorry so like that's the life of an astrologer where astrology comes into apologies <laughs> and uh, yeah when that happens I you know there is not that we shouldn't take ownership of how we behave but some you know you don't feel as bad where you kind of know that there is a lot more going on energetically and where certain situations when when you see what the transit is about there is most likely and just an echo of many 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 other situations where maybe that anger wasn't expressed or healthy anger I mean where the boundaries weren't expressed or the expectations weren't or the needs weren't expressed. So, you know, when when that happens. Yeah, totally. And that example you give, I can completely relate. And it almost is, I guess, without the understanding of it and without the ability to stop and like, wait, I can check what's happening right now and get some kind of additional context. It almost can seem like manic, but it's actually very grounded feeling right like that moment where you can turn around and say okay wait I'm apologizing for this I really just kind of acted that out and now I'm sorry that can that can be very you know more than just the apology and the understanding that we have ourselves but it's so very disarming when we can go from instead of zero to 60 like go from 60 to zero and say like okay no I get it that was that wasn't helpful but that was my moment and mm. you know it's over yes. now so yes and that's real alchemy right this is absolutely this is yeah for. and right with that then I was actually able to explain t as I reflected on why it, the outburst happened I was able to peacefully gracefully explain what what was actually at the cause of it like what I needed at that time what didn't happen even so like I wasn't communicating properly before so there was a miscommunication about the silliest thing ever like the dishes <laughs> I love astrology for this you know the clarity and the ability to bring it into everyday life experience and really seeing it how how much transits are influencing us it's it's just fascinating I will never get tired of it so you Sumati yeah. have a lot of uh, planets in the fourth house house of family roots ancestors your Mars Venus and Pluto is sitting there so I wonder and how, you. you know are you it almost feels like you are alchemizing a lot not just for yourself but for the entire family lineage and you have super galactic center conjunct Pluto yes in the fourth house so wow how how is that on top of everything else it's um it feels like the cake that the icing is on <laughs> so yeah it, it's a lot but it has been a lot like the last few years 
in general, the nodal shift that we've been experiencing, the all the eclipses in Libra and Aries that are coming, this is such a, a big, all these choice points. And choice points not only in the actions for, you know, the now moments, but also in reflecting how it is that past experiences still sit with me. A lot of alchemizing older experiences that are mine as well as, as you said, through my family lineage, like ancestral healing that has been able to really assist my own. I mean, I think in, in many ways one leads to the other, although they don't happen in a linear way. They go hand in hand. And that's really been such a gift. Also, when I look at my own chart, I think that's really what really it's what I'm here for, because my chart is so replete with squares and trines and one follows the next. And it's a matter of choosing which energies I'm consciously tuning into and calling in to work with. And, you know, these moments, whenever some kind of, you know, when life happens and we're faced with something that feels challenging, and that can be good or bad as we perceive it, right? Something could be exciting and really good, but how do we move with that too? Because we can really make so much more of that depending on how it is we choose to relate to the experience. So I've come to a place now where I can see that where previously I would think like, again, why is this again? Why am I being presented with this again? I already fixed this or I already experienced this. And, you know, now I can see uh, it's because with the conscious awareness of it, it doesn't, it's not an exercise of the mind perfecting the practical or analytical way of perceiving and meeting a challenge so much as it is if I, if I meet these things from a, a wider and more spiritual perspective, then I'm able to really feel that the purpose of that experience, like this really can experientially open new possibilities for us. And it isn't as difficult as we have been conditioned to believe and that we maybe allow ourselves to continue believing just because that Re, you know fits in a status quo yes. i love that your moon is in the ninth house in pisces as we mentioned before and your mc also is in pisces but it's the ninth house of the moon where you are driven towards or you're wired to look for that higher perspective higher meaning higher philosophy about the experiences of of life that is presented to you I think that's uh, what you just shared there. It's such a beautiful manifestation of that ninth house placement. Can I ask, I'm curious, with that super galactic center sitting on your fourth house, have you ever, maybe in deep meditation or, I don't know, regression hypnosis, have you ever had the privilege to connect to deep ancestors, to really that beautiful essence of where we come from, where you feel the collective of kind of the highest form of, of the ancestors. Have you ever had that experience? I, in some ways, yes. It, it's been, I've found it, that in and of itself, a journey in coming to understand what that is. Because it's something that without this context, astrologically, I really didn't quite like, my intellectual mind wants to get engaged and doesn't know what to make of that. Mm -hmm. So all of those, I, I think that kind of goes with that from a young age, I always had a scope of interest and a desire to look super deeply like into the lineage. Yeah. All sorts of details of different concepts and cultures in particular traditions so there's really this very deep connection with healthy ritual, I guess, and being interested in that as an aspect of humanity, really, right? That this is something that in all different cultures, 
whatever it is that's sacred, there is ritual around it. There is practice and community around it. And no matter what the culture is, this has always held an interest for me. In so many ways, I already came at a very young age to understand that wasn't really common. <laughs> like not a lot of not a lot of people kind of were maybe comprehending where I was coming from with the questions that I would have. So I learned at a very young age to kind of just like maybe not ask the questions because they never the answers were always very only touching on the surface for me or the question itself would be dismissed as, you know, something amusing, like, isn't it funny what kids come up with? And so this much deeper connection as I've, as I've grown older, obviously, now has found a context, because it's never stopped, it's never gone away. I've always wanted to see more, you know, as soon as there's some sort of presentation of information for me that I'm expected to see and receive in a certain way, I'm just automatically wired to want to explore that fundamental presumption of why it is that way, which leads to a lot of why questions. <laughs> and this is something now that I've becoming comfortable with feeling that, you know, I there's a deep connection within me that just understands there's something more. And that doesn't always mean that I know what that is at a level of detail and frequently and more and more, it's enough to know that it's a deeper connection to our very nature of what and who we are, that this thread connects us all, always, and a deep trust in that, in that connection to source that each of us is, is something that I really feel that with, with my Pluto is something I didn't understand when I was younger at all. And uh, now Pluto's Pluto's movement into Aquarius is feeling really potent and also in a very Plutonian way, kind of like sudden. I, you know, I see this coming and I thought, okay, this is, this is good. I'm prepared for this, you know, like, let's go. It's okay. I don't know quite what's coming, but um, there's always something new for us to learn both for ourselves and also with, um, it educates us, right? Each experience we move through educates us in another way that we can perceive our own experiences will allow us to expand beyond whatever limitations are that we're holding, particularly the ones we're not super aware of. Beautifully and said. From what trying to allow it. <laughs> trying to allow it. What I'm hearing from what you're saying is a beautiful validation to what I've been pondering for a while now that I believe life is training us through these many experience and deep experiences of interpersonal relationships and feeling everyone else's stuff, feeling our own past lives, not just Earth, but other star systems and planets to even other galaxies. Like there's just so much that we can get lost in, but it's getting to the point where we are realizing that we don't need to exactly pinpoint whose is this whose is that is it mine is it not mine it doesn't matter we are becoming really more like an ocean like it all belongs to the ocean it all, all belongs to creation and we are fragment of it and we are kind of growing into being totally at peace with it allowing whatever is coming through just oh okay this is interesting let me feel it and then get a higher perspective process it done moving on to the next now experience i think it's such a good and healthy progression that we are heading into because we are really opening up to so much that it can really drive us insane trying to figure out when did this happen how long ago was this like it's pure insanity whereas just uh, witnessing it's becoming much much easier to um to go through these waves would you would you agree I couldn't agree more. My natal Mercury in Scorpio is very, let me figure it out. There's something mysterious. Oh, I'll figure that out. And this has been my nature through life and just, you know, relying on intellect and relying on being able to figure the thing out. Mm. And what I've figured out is you don't need to figure it all out. You need to let it be and let it move through. Just figure out that the way you feel is something you're feeling. 
let that be what it is, and then it will move along on its own. And the more that we, we, I'll speak for myself, the more that I have tried to really figure out, you know, the, the deeper experiences in life, something, you know, the more, the more drastic a change is, or the more deeply felt a hurt is, the more I tried to intellectually figure it out so that I could avoid the discomfort the next time. And what ended up being figured out through trial and error, many squares, many trials, <laughs> is that that isn't the path that's actually helpful. That isn't the path to personal mastery or even just to peace or contentment. Truly, that comes, that has come with being really cultivating a witness perspective that I can I can observe what it is that I'm feeling and then allow that. It um, inviting and allowing mystery to be part of life is much more important than I would have ever given it credit for some years ago. Mm. Yes. Oh, I love it. So with <laughs> we we took such a detour <laughs> from <laughs> Where did you start? Uh, you know, tell us about your spiritual journey, spiritual experience. Um, is there anything in your past experiences that you would like to share for this podcast recording in terms of how you navigated your experience of the awareness of the other realms? And has it been like that with you pretty much from early on or, or at some point in your adult journey, something triggered your deeper curiosity? My interest was always very present, but cultural, familial, collective conditioning very much excluded anything, anything more esoteric from being a real possibility to pursue in life. And you so, were born in Canada, right? Yes. My background, though, with my parents are uh, German and Indian both immigrants who came to Canada, then I'm the result. So I grew up with a very multicultural... East um, and the West coming together. <laughs> yeah, um, living in, you know, and raised in Northern Ontario. So it was a fairly small community. So I really had this interesting blend of a very international sort of awareness and multicultural awareness in a very small and fairly secluded, relatively speaking, North American town, which there wasn't a lot of opportunity to meet people that had, you know, something. I never met an astrologer until, like, I don't know, I was an adult, probably. Like, it just, the scope of interests that were deemed reasonable to pursue was narrowed into things that were very pragmatic and practical. I was always, I was encouraged from a young age just to move through an academic pursuit. And even creative pursuits were like structured and put into these boxes. And my own learning style, the older I grew, became more and more apparent to me that as much as I thirst for knowledge, like I'm perpetually asking why of everything and wanting to know more, it was also very clear that formal academic structure just doesn't, <laughs> just can't. It needs to be a more experiential and organic experience for me to detour and to move at my own pace. And so it really wasn't until I moved through a chunk of adulthood that the choices I kept making, like I was saying earlier, trying to figure things out and perfect them and using my mind and intellectual abilities to make wise choices, but from a very pragmatic standpoint. And then that all sort of just came apart because I hadn't made the choice for myself. And so the universe makes these choices. If we're going to have some lesson presented to us and we don't make the choice to face it ourselves directly, inevitably we will be faced with that circumstance anyway. And so when it came to me to look again at like, okay, how am I moving through life? I just, the corporate world was not for me. Taking these very conventional ways of moving through life definitely was not for me. And that it made much more sense to truly embrace all of what 
I had always been deeply interested in, but which up to that point I had in moving through life and trying to reconcile my deeper interests and more esoteric interests with you know, a very practical, everyday, mundane world, I really kind of disassociated from myself in many ways. I really tried to compartmentalize these two people where I was had interests that had nothing to do with what I do at work, day to day, and but these are where my real interests lie. There was no harmony that way in my own self-expression. So there's so much that I see now as being stepped forward for so many people that are in a, you know of a younger generation moving really boldly into new choices and it's such a beautiful thing and at the same time people of you know closer to my own age you know hello chiron and aries generations and gen x because there's a whole lot of personal empowerment that's just really starting to light itself up in different ways that we really just don't need to stay in a smaller space just because that's what we've always done. To keep and others comfortable with their world. Totally, mm -hmm. totally. And there is so much that we can gain when we just allow ourselves to broaden our horizons to the places that truly call to us and a great deal of healing in that as well. I am curious, what was the first modality that you maybe became certified in? Because looking at your website, Quantum sunrise.ca for Canada. There is, apart from galactic astrology modality, there is something else. Choose love, karmic readings, Reiki energy sessions. So we can talk about those. What was the first modality that you became certified in? The was while you were still working at the corporate? No, the, it was a very, that shift for me was very sudden and it was just massive. It was everything in life changed right now. Okay, here you are, you're going to start over because that's not happening anymore. So what will you choose? Will you choose to try again the same thing you've already tried? Was this pre-COVID or post? Uh, Pre-COVID. So yes. And the conversation that you've had with Philip Sedgwick, wherein he explained about how, you know, we feel this like six months to a year in advance when we have connections, tight connections with the galactic points was just like, yes. For a few years before, probably two years before COVID, I had been saying, I really wish we could just like hit pause mm -hmm. because there's just so much to, to just move through. Wish we could hit pause. And then COVID happened and there was a collective pause button pushed right on how life was being lived for everyone. So in that, in that big experience of really saying like, okay, everything is possible now and I need to do something new. Like I need to do life differently for my own sake. It was Reiki that was first. I just needed a place of very neutral, allowing for just internally for myself. And that was just the most beautiful step forward into healing. And the way I met um, the person who's the Reiki master with whom I studied, even that was all just very faded. You know, once we, once we allow for these possibilities to bring us something, then we 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 see it it's all it's all available and so that was a beautiful entry for me into that self-healing and very quickly it's like it's everything snowballed for me reiki moved to the choose love karmic readings this was something that really was very potent the reiki allowed a good foundation to exist a healthier foundation to exist and then the Choose Love Karmic readings. Really good. So I just <clears throat> opened your website, quantumsunrise.ca. So there's uh, the Reiki energy sessions that people can book. Welcome to the dawn of your cosmic soul. I love it. And then Choose Love Karmic readings. And then there's Galactic Astrology. What is the difference between the type of client or the need that a client has whether they choose reiki choose love or galactic astrology can you kind of differentiate between the three they're very um complementary working together as well the reiki is i think maybe as i explained my own experience with it is a little bit more of um you know if we really just don't know we simply need to feel a deeper connection and feel some healing and 
reconnect ourselves with ourselves and with the energy that is really all around us, that Reiki is very soothing and a very gentle approach. It doesn't require the client to, you know, we don't have to engage with conversation. There's no sharing that is needed on the client's part to disclose any kind of information. It's truly their own internal experience and the Reiki energy is simply there to assist and kind of refill refill their cup, you know, when we feel drained. The rebalance, truth, recenter. Yes, yes. Mm. Feel ourselves even again so that we can continue through every day. The karmic readings, so those are it's very particular core soul story, which is brought through for the client, explaining the experience that they had in a past life, which left the the deepest karmic imprint, which in different iterations has been repeated in every lifetime since. And so this very deep wound that we're not necessarily conscious of, but which we see happen in life over and over again. So those moments in life where we think like, why is this happening again? I already, I've already experienced this. I've already dealt with this trauma why does this keep happening? Or why do I always find myself in this situation? These, these are the kinds of things that are us enacting this same familiar pattern again. And, you know, in some ways, it's like, we, we're comfortable with the wound that we know. And so it can be scary to move beyond that. And once we can understand and know what that story is, it becomes possible to just release that. Then we can understand that the emotions that we've been holding on to are there protecting that very tender space of deep knowing that we've actually already experienced that. So this wound that we're, you know, kind of protecting and still moving through in order to keep that tender center from being exposed, once we understand what it is, we're able to say like, okay, well, that's not that's not in the now. I can allow that to be where it was and to just inform me and allow me to make different choices now. Along with that reading, naming the core story is also the soul's gift being named. So it also gives um, an insight into what it is that we truly can step forward into and what can we become, you know, what are we really empowered with that we haven't acknowledged ourselves and so it can be a um, very freeing experience. Those karmic readings tend to be for the client who is really ready to make a deep change in their life. They're, they're very transformational experiences. It's a two-session reading. There is some personal homework attached in the period between the two and an integration session. And then the galactic astrology quantum soul readings are in what it is that I bring through tends to also be kind of similar in so much as it will be what it is that you've experienced through some past connection and what is the star energy, the planetary aspect there. What was the experience that is most helpful for you to know now? for what you're experiencing here in this lifetime. There's a lot less of filling in sort of some details that are maybe more, you know, we think of this and we're fascinated of, has I have I been on this star? Or have I been there? And which life was that? And it, it moves away from that idea of getting into the stories because the stories are interesting, but they're still keeping us in this one smaller place. And so what out of all of those different stories, what is it that's important for you to know in the now in order for you to really live your best life in this life, which is what I really believe we, we each of us are here to do. And in living our best life, we bring that entire frequency of the collective to ever more beautiful places. You know what, as you say all that, I bet that the main story of your soul journey through many star systems and 
possibly even galaxies. Your chart is, by the way, packed with conjunctions to multiple star systems. So um, I could easily put you into that category of multi-galactic uh, or galactic ambassador, multi-galactic star seed. But uh, what it feels like is that your theme is to experience multitude of different strands of DNA of creation and then experience them and integrate them and bring them to the frequency of love and wisdom through higher understanding through seeing it from a higher perspective so like you say we would we could want to get stuck in the stories where exactly and what exactly was your identity and what was going on around you but these are really just kind of sideline periphery stories whereas the essence of it is simply bringing a lot of diff uh, a lot of different information and strands together and reach the frequency of love and higher understanding through your own experience creating that blueprint and then kind of inspiring everything that was connected to you within those timelines to to coming higher to unity to love and wisdom and peace it feels like that's the main theme so it's kind of like that right i love that i love that it's so perfect and as you said that about the stories it's like that's the part that makes the movie but what's the story arc right what's the moral of the yeah. story yeah. because we could do really good scenery that actually i can't do really good scenery when it comes to the readings that just doesn't it just doesn't tend to be what when i'm checking into clients records that level of curiosity detail which i completely understand by the way <laughs> um but that level of curiosity and detail just simply doesn't flesh out it it is really that overarching, what is the purpose of this, is helpful for us to understand now because something in that experience we have on some level forgotten, you know? Maybe we mastered something in a past life, and yet in this life we've forgotten we already know that. And so we're struggling with the challenge over and over again of how do I deal with this, this life situation? Well, in fact, we can just we can just feel into the idea that there isn't an answer that you're missing that someone else is going to deliver, but rather to trust that you can know what it is that's the next thing and to move through it. It can be it can be frightening because we want to create situations, we want to move through life so that we're creating a good experience for ourselves and for others, but in looking to fine-tune all the details in order to make that happen often isn't you know it has the opposite effect so allowing ourselves to make use of what comes to us as opposed to constantly just seeking for the right tool as if the ones you have are not fit for purpose you know beautifully said thank you for pointing that out yes so with your galactic astrology sessions have you noticed any kind of patterns or theme or something that is starting to excite you the most in terms of the experiences that you had so far with your clients what is it like for you to go through the quantum soul guidance session anything yeah. that you would like to highlight every every client session is such a beautiful experience like for me as well because truly you know we don't we don't know how it is that we're what we're bringing through how is that going to resonate for the client even if we know a certain amount of things about them we don't we don't know them it, particularly their whole everyone has such rich life experience and rich life stories and then when the information that comes through really resonates deeply with them it's um, a beautiful it's a beautiful experience for me as a practitioner feeling really humble and and honored that what I, what is coming through is meaningful for them and then also the following experiences after the reading i've had some clients where they've had um, past life memories become unlocked in a way that has been very gradual and allowing them because some of them have been very difficult and traumatic memories different past life memories and they have begun to be accessible in a way that they've been able to understand what it is 
and feel very comfortable and not fear these experiences as they've come up. I've also had clients, I've had quite a few now who are blueprinters, originators, very angelic realm, dragon soul origin, many really truly very powerful energies that it's been a really beautiful experience to to be able to help the client remember who they are and really start to connect with the very powerful energies that they already have within them to actually find ways to access them and to exercise them in their life now so that it's helping them to move forward in a way that that feels more free and allows more opportunities for joy to be experienced in a way moving through it's getting fear out of the way you know we there's so much that we think of well i'm not afraid of that i just don't want to well okay why don't <laughs> why not you know what allowing there to be room for mystery without fearing the worst at each time and this is part of i think the collective conditioning also that you know we must choose a because b is going to be terrible when in fact there's a whole alphabet that you're not considering of choices and options right that that's possible and we can actually let ourselves explore them and so bringing clients either remember or just feel that they have access and that they are greater than you know the sum of their parts it's been very very beautiful um, watching clients relate to what it is that I present to them in their charts in ways that are either past life recollections or very much in this life as well. Energies, things that they've experienced and begun to understand maybe why their response and reaction to those things has been the way it is and being free to choose a different way to see that the next time that comes around. You know, I wonder based on your natal chart placements, if and I bet <laughs> if that is going to now um, manifest very particularly throughout your sessions. What I mean by this is you having your Mars and Venus and Pluto in the fourth house, house of ancestors. Now, the clients that come to you, it's more likely that you will be able to tap into their deep ancestors, their ancestral patterns and stories that they need to uncover you know, through that Venus and Mars and Pluto, and it can be transformational. Now, right now, the transiting Pluto is entering your eighth house, house of deep transformation, everything that's hidden, you know, astrology, esoteric stuff. So it's likely that clients will have powerful, transformational, life-changing experiences as they explore their hidden gems with you, through you. You also have Saturn in 12th house, so another indicator that it's likely that that can now manifest in your client sessions as a natural ability to understand deep subconscious patterns and karmic cycles and ending karmic cycles, you know, all these things. And of course, that super galactic center there in your fourth house. Um, so is it okay if I just mention some of the galactic alignments that you have that are so powerful here as well? Your son in Libra, in fifth house, conjunct Svika, very powerful spiritual um, guidance star, and as well, uh, Arcturus, you always come side by side, Arcturus is in a closer alignment, and that I feel is such a beautiful, graceful, compassionate, angelic energy frequency that you carry with you that perhaps is allowing you to face all the challenges and difficulties of interpersonal relationships with gaining that higher perspective. There is Sirius B, Mirza, uh, conjunct your ascendant. So Sirius was rising as you were born. Your ascendant is in Cancer. So again, such a powerful, grounded wisdom. And here again, I'll say, I didn't say it for quite a while, but before I used to say it quite often, if you have a Pleiadian uh, starseed talking, they speak quite fast and are just like all over the place. But Syrian starseeds, you have Sirius on your ascendant. It's much more grounded, uh, very wise, beautiful uh, energy frequency, which you very much have. It's like the you know first thing that I notice about you is that graceful, grounded, calm wisdom. 
So I think that's such a beautiful validation of of that uh, observation that I had uh, that I have with Syrian star seeds. Okay, your lunar nodes are on the Lyra Ring Nebula. So your north node is conjunct um, Lyra Nebula. So in Capricorn, seventh house, house of relationships. So I would say that uh, you will most likely interact with many uh, star seeds that have the Lyran genetics. Most of us um, do, but it can really assist with going all the way to the core issues, like you've said, um, you know, feeling safe uh, or not expecting the worst case scenario anymore ever since Lyran Wars. So I think that's such a powerful guidance there for you coming from Lyra. Then your midheaven has crooks constellation and the crook star trining. Then you have Lyra sextiling. Then you have Aldebaran and Antares squaring and galactic, the great attractor squaring your, your midheaven in Pisces. So really powerful guidance that guidance there but the the connection to the prosecution that usually comes through the crooks a crooks uh, alignment but for you it's trying it's a very positive influence i feel like there is this inner guidance inner ability to to kind of face the the fears and anxieties of us coming out into the public eye again in this incarnations where previously we were prosecuted and really suffered for speaking the truth or going against the current paradigm so perhaps that's also something that you may assist others with and venus is opposing eridanus you know the the cosmic river and the alpha eridani star you have corvus constellation conjunct your mars in fourth house and algorap perhaps that is the kind of the darker energy of the one or the, or both ancestral lineages whether through germany or india that you came to uh, transmute and alchemize and then assist others who have that connection to facing the shadow and embracing it transmuting it and you seeing it as a gift uh, that help us navigate this um, this challenging reality on earth and your Saturn in Gemini in 12th house conjunct Nihal and also Bellatrix Orion. So, you know, connecting with that indigo frequency and the Bellatrix, Bellatrix, the kind of the spirit warrior feminine energy that will stand up and will not be taken down in this lifetime. So, oh, and just I just wanted to mention that Lilith in Scorpio such a powerful placement in fifth house conjunct alpha centauri star system and i'm just curious you have quite a lot of placements in your fifth house how did that play out for you was it throughout maybe childhood teenage years in terms of uh, the hobbies and maybe the creativity that was maybe suppressed like there were challenges in in that regard or was it through passionate uh, connections in in earlier years like where was there a lot of of that or or is it really about that playful creativity that you're rediscovering as your divine birthright and calling it out no matter what everyone else is expecting and saying can you talk about your fifth house experience with the many placements that you have there all of the above <laughs> <laughs> literally all of the above so um in my teenage years what had been a very stable calm home life or i shouldn't say calm exactly mm. but very kind of yeah, norm very mm. consistent right completely exploded and my parents separated it was unexpected it was it just brought everything into a complete change so that very much moved into a time of feeling very very unsettled interesting that you like i mentioned just about lilith too that and how what sort of clients and what do i bring um in client readings it tends often to be focused on lilith chiron nodal like these shifts these real bringing through what is it that we're not wanting to see or that is operating very energetically very dynamically in our lives but which we don't notice because it seems like the undercurrent that already exists and what is there that's there that we really can begin to 
to understand without analyzing and then allow what that is like that knowing can suddenly inform us in a way that we just don't feel bound to our reactions in the same way. We don't feel tied to the same sort of emotional response that we would say is our natural way of responding because we can recognize where that's come from something that we've that we've experienced in the past and potentially family related. So really a lot of that just learning through my own family experience how how much is there to not just, you know, make a judgment of what's good or what's bad. I mean, our, I think any parent does what they believe is best in any given moment. And being able as a child, adult or not, to consider our parents also experience their own conditioning and their own um, restrictions and, and how would that have been just to allow that to be without judgment moving through that. So it's taken a lot of it personal forgiveness and alchemy, which Reiki was very helpful in sort of breaching that shell, cancer shell of don't touch it, to then being able to move through from that out into growth. Like what now that now that we understand what that is or know what that is and it becomes something we're aware of, it becomes something very powerful, right? That we actually can can make that part of our knowing and part of what allows us and empowers us to make choices wisely for ourselves and for other people as it keeps as it keeps representing itself because inevitably these things do yeah as you say this it becomes even clearer that it's um, it's like almost like a niche where you look at the ancestral patterns lineage and how they kind of created the product of our environment that we are until we become conscious of the patterns and start seeing choices that we didn't see before. But then the focus shifts to what is your joy, the fifth house creativity? What do you want to bring to the, to this world that is so passionate? You have your Scorpio in the fifth house, but also Libra in the, in the fifth house placements there. So what brings you joy? What did you come here to create that is going to really make you feel excited and passionate and attractive and everything changes because there's Uranus in your fifth house. So that can then manifest through client's experiences of, oh my God, after this session, just I've changed everything. And now I'm actually in my highest joy and this is what's happening. Yeah, actually, I had a client recently who who said almost just exactly <laughs> that. It's like, I, it's right I, have, I feel like a new life has mm -hmm. opened up. So, yeah. Yeah, so I'm becoming even more clear on, on this understanding of the of the collective of the quantum soul guidance practitioners and surely in all other modalities that you know your your natal placements are manifested throughout your entire life experience from early childhood teenage years adulthood you live it as as you as an expression of your natal chart and then when you get to the point of understanding yourself, of course, the journey never ends, but having some conscious understanding and taking responsibility for who we are and the choices we are making with help of astrology, in our case, kind of activating that th those higher octaves of each zodiac sign and the planet. And then when we step onto the path of service, where orders are coming into us in perfect alignment with the transits of our own natal charts, the, the chart becomes alive through the client sessions as well. Whatever is most powerful throughout our natal chart starts coming through. So yeah, I encourage all QSD practitioners to take another look at their natal chart, see where the most energy is in, which houses, which life areas, and then can you see it as this is becoming your niche, this, these are becoming your strengths, this is what you're going to be naturally good at, zooming it zooming in on different areas of your of your client's life um, because you really lived it. And of course, universe is going to um, naturally attract clients that need exactly that very particular key or key set uh, that you hold and how exciting that can be. I think it's so beautiful because as you say, that each individual's life experience becomes the natural way of things for each each practitioner's specialty to be something different about how we deliver the readings because that isn't we're not aware of what those pieces will be that 
the client relates to, and yet from that level of personal understanding will intuitively be adding, you know, the information in whatever way we each do differently about what is there that we can do to tune into these higher energies, right? To really be able to activate this internal alchemy to make the experience of the reading be something that assists our growth truly in a deep personal way. You know, when the clients find each of us in the way that feels right for them, that really is likely to be because that person's own experience means they intuitively understand how maybe that this information is accessible in a way that just the right quite the right words or the right perspective might work for them. It's such a beautiful community we have of everyone is just so inspiring and such a beautiful willingness to work with others and help others. It truly like an unexpected benefit of having moved through the course material. It's such a beautiful and supportive community. I'm glad to hear that and uh, totally agree. Yeah, I just want to add to what we just shared here that of course, it's not going to be always 100% spot on like that because life likes to show us sometimes the contrast to what we have for maybe sometimes too long to the point where we start wondering if things are real. So then we experience the contrast so that we can compare and see the differences and really then fine tune our ability to focus on, on our own unique uh, niche. And of course, some charts don't have it very obviously focused energies on particular life areas. Some charts are really much more spread energies across the 12 life areas and across uh, many planets. So it's not always just black and white, but that's what keeps it interesting and challenging at the same time. Is there anything else, Sumati, that you would like to bring to this recording? Any maybe parting message, whether for the viewers or the course students, anything else that's on your heart? I think it would just, for anyone who is considering moving into taking the course, I would encourage them because the material is so rich and because the community is so supportive and there's no clock running on a need to complete at any given moment or time, it can be a beautiful tool to simply increase your own understanding of yourself, even if someone didn't move to the point of wanting to practice, it is such a deep and enriching personal experience. So anyone looking for this, you know, who's seeking maybe more deeply and the a wonderful opportunity, I think is never ending. It's like, we don't ever stop learning. There's always something new that we can find, right? There's so many types of astrology, it opens a door to a whole new landscape. And for clients who are seeking something, maybe they're curious that really there's such a beautiful community of so many different practitioners and so many beautiful languages. I love that part of it. You know, we have all these languages, they're all over the world, we are all over the world. And there is someone who will feel right for you. And I think that's really important for people to who might be looking for a reading to really feel into the energy of the person they're going to engage for that. It's important that they feel comfortable, that there are so many options available. And like you said, we all have our own flavor and different, so many are multidisciplinary, multimodality practitioners. There is real opportunity there when we're willing to engage with our own energies, with some assistance to be able to open doors to so many more experiences than we think are available just in this life. Yeah, new horizons open up if we're willing to be open to the possibility they exist. Oh, I love that perspective on the course as well. Thank you, Sumati. Thank you so much. That really means a lot. Such an honor to be here with you. And I look forward to staying connected. Thank you all for watching. And we look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Much love. Take care.